Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is about an Euler sum. We have summation over positive integer m of each m. That's the nth harmonic number. Each m is summation k from 1 to m, 1 over k. Each m is divided by m to the power alpha. Alpha here is an integer greater than or equal to 2. The value of this sum is in terms of the zeta function. Zeta of s, when the real part of s is greater than 1, is summation n from 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the power s. Let's call this finite sum omega. Omega is summation v from 1 to alpha minus 2. This sum is equal to 0 if alpha is exactly equal to 2. The sum is zeta of alpha minus v times zeta of v plus 1. Let's replace each zeta function by its sum. Zeta of v plus 1 is summation over positive integer m of 1 over m to the power v plus 1. Zeta of alpha minus v is summation over positive integer n of 1 over n to the power alpha minus v. Omega is given by this triple sum. n and m are positive integers. v is from 1 to alpha minus 2. If the indices m and n are equal, the sum is 1 over n to the power alpha minus v plus v plus 1. That's 1 over n to the power alpha plus 1. So if m is equal to n, we have summation n from 1 to infinity, summation v from 1 to alpha minus 2 of 1 over n to the alpha plus 1. The sum over v is the number of terms in this sum, which is alpha minus 2. The sum with respect to n is zeta of alpha plus 1. After this step, we exclude the possibility of n equal to m from the triple sum. We write the sum as 1 over m times n to the power alpha times n over m to the power v. The sum with respect to v is a finite geometric series. The value of this sum is the first term n over m multiplied by the ratio of the geometric series n over m raised to the power the number of terms alpha minus 2. Then we subtract 1. Downstairs we have n over m minus 1. n divided by m times n to the alpha is 1 over m times n to the alpha minus 1. In the denominator we have m multiplied by n over m minus 1. We get 1 over n minus m. Take this part inside the bracket. n over alpha minus 2 over n to the alpha minus 1 is 1 over n. In the denominator, m times m to the alpha minus 2 is m to the alpha minus 1. Inside the bracket, we now have 1 over n times m to the alpha minus 1 minus 1 over n to the alpha minus 1 times m. If we multiply by 1 over n minus m, we get these two terms. Note that I can write this term as minus 1 over m minus n times n to the alpha minus 1 times m. In the double sum, with respect to m and n, n not equal to m, the sum is invariant if m and m are interchanged. If the sum of these two ratios is the function g of n and m, then it is equal to g of m and n. If we do the double sum with n greater than m, we get exactly the same result if we do the double sum with m greater than n. Based on this, we write omega as alpha minus 2 times zeta of alpha plus 1 plus 2 times the double sum with n greater than m. m is from 1 to infinity. n is from m plus 1 to infinity. We write the sum in this form. Let's change summation index n. We have a new index s. s is n minus m. So n is s plus m. n minus m becomes s. This n becomes s plus m. n to the alpha minus 1 is s plus m, all to the alpha minus 1. When n is equal to m plus 1, s is equal to 1. When n tends to infinity, s tends to infinity. From this bracket, take 1 over m s as a common factor. Then write 1 over m s as the sum of these two terms. If we combine the fractions in the denominator, we get m s s plus m. Upstairs, we get s plus m. So indeed, this is 1 over m s. Multiply the two brackets to get these four terms. We take the positive terms together and the negative terms together. The negative terms together with this two is minus 2 summation m from 1 to infinity, s from 1 to infinity, 1 over s plus m to the power alpha times a bracket with 1 over m plus 1 over s. This sum can be written as minus 4, summation m from 1 to infinity, summation s from 1 to infinity, 1 over m times s plus m to the power alpha. This sum is exactly that one, just by renaming s as m and m as s. For the other double sum, we also have the bracket 1 over m plus 1 over s, now multiplied by 1 over m to the alpha minus 2 times the square of s plus m. This bracket is s plus m over m s, multiplying we get 1 over m to the alpha minus 1 times s plus m times s. 
multiplying numerator and denominator by m, we get 1 over m to the alpha, m over m plus s, times 1 over s. We can write the numerator of m over s times m plus s as m plus s minus s. This is 1 over s minus 1 over m plus s. Omega, which is summation v from 1 to alpha minus 2, zeta of alpha minus v, zeta of v plus 1, is equal to alpha minus 2 times zeta of alpha plus 1, plus 2, summation m from 1 to infinity, 1 over m to the power alpha, summation over positive s of 1 over s minus 1 over s plus m. We also have minus 4, double sum over positive integers m and s of 1 over m times s plus m to the power alpha. Let's now focus on this sum with respect to s. Consider the finite sum all the way to big K of 1 over s minus 1 over s plus m. We can split this into summation s from 1 to big K, 1 over s minus summation. Let's use another index L from 1 to big K, 1 over L plus m. In this summation, let L be s minus m. When L is 1, s is small m plus 1. When L is big K, s is big K plus small m. The sum is 1 over s. This quantity here can be written as summation s from 1 to small m, 1 over s, plus summation s from small m plus 1 to big K, 1 over s. These two terms are this sum here. We then have minus, I will write this sum all the way to K, then minus another sum from K plus 1 to K plus small m. This is the nth harmonic number. We have cancellation. Then we have minus 1 over big K plus 1 plus 1 over big K plus 2 all the way to 1 over big K plus small m. For every small m, we have here a finite number of terms, no matter how large. So when we take the limit as k tends to infinity to obtain this sum here, those terms go to zero. The survivor is the nth harmonic number. This sum is hm. In this double sum, we do a change of summation index. Specifically, we change index s into r. r is equal to s plus m. When s is 1, r is m plus 1. The summand becomes 1 over m times r to the power alpha. We can start the summation with respect to r at r equal to m. Then we subtract this extra term, which is 1 over m to the power alpha. We now have a double sum, m from 1 to infinity, r from m to infinity of 1 over m times r to the alpha minus summation over positive integer m of 1 over m to the power alpha plus 1. This sum is zeta of alpha plus 1. Interchange the order of summation here. This double sum is equal to the double sum with r from 1 to infinity m from 1 to r. If we sum with respect to m, we get the rth harmonic number. This double sum is summation r from 1 to infinity, hr divided by r to the power alpha. Rename r as m. On the right-hand side, we have alpha plus 2 times zeta of alpha plus 1, minus 2 times summation over positive integer m of hm divided by m to the power alpha. Put this sum on the left-hand side. Recall the expression for big omega. The sum over positive integer m of the nth harmonic number divided by m to the power alpha, alpha is an integer greater than or equal to 2, is alpha plus 2 over 2 times zeta of alpha plus 1 minus 1 half summation v from 1 to alpha minus 2, zeta of alpha minus v times zeta of v plus 1. If alpha is equal to 2, this sum is equal to 0. We get that summation m from 1 to infinity hm over m squared is 2 plus 2 over 2, that's 2 times zeta of 3. If alpha is equal to 3, this fraction is 5 over 2, this becomes zeta of 4, there is one term in the sum with a small v equal to 1. Specifically, we get zeta of 2 times zeta of 3 minus 1, which another copy of zeta of 2. So this sum is 5 zeta over 4 divided by 2 minus 1 half times the square of zeta of 2. Zeta of 2 is pi squared over 6. Zeta of 4 is pi to the power 4 over 90. If alpha is 4, this term is 3 zeta of 5. We have two terms here corresponding to v equal to 1 and v equal to 2. Both terms are the product of zeta of 2 and zeta of 3. Let's apply this Euler sum to the integral x from 0 to 1, log x to the power k, where k is a positive integer, times log 1 minus x all over 1 minus x. This is the generating function of the nth harmonic number. We can start the sum from 0 or from 1, defining h of 0 to be equal to 0. And this sum here, h of n, is h of n minus 1. That's the sum of the reciprocals of the positive integers all the way to 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 over n. Split into two sums, summation n from 1 to infinity, h of n minus 1 x to the n, which can be written as x to the n minus 1, and an x here outside the sum. We also get the sum n from 1 to infinity, x to the n over n, 
This summation is the series four minus log one minus X. In this summation, replace N by N plus one. So this is summation N from zero to infinity, H N X to the N. So this sum here is equal to X times itself minus log one minus X. The sum itself, the generating function of the nth harmonic number is minus log one minus X over one minus X. The magnitude of X is less than one. Based on this, we can write down this part of the integrand as minus summation n from 1 to infinity, hn x to the n. Let's integrate term by term. The integral of interest is minus summation. We can start n at 0 or 1. hn integral x from 0 to 1, x to the n, log x to the k. This integral is minus 1 to the power k, gamma of k plus 1. This is k factorial divided by n plus 1 to the power k plus 1. Note that we have hn, but it is divided by n plus 1 to the power k plus 1. The Euler sum that we have derived involves the summation n from 1 to infinity, hn over n to the power alpha. n here, n there. To be able to use our Euler sum, we just write down this hn as hn plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. We can multiply this part by minus 1 to make it 1 over n plus 1 minus hn plus 1. Now this becomes minus 1 to the power k. The first sum will be 1 over n plus 1 to the power k plus 2. This summation here is zeta of k plus 2. Then we have summation n from 0 to infinity, h n plus 1 over n plus 1 to the k plus 1. Change n to n minus 1. This sum is summation n from 1 to infinity, h n over n to the k plus 1. This is exactly our Euler sum with alpha equal to k plus 1. We now have the value of this integral in terms of a finite sum involving the zeta functions. This result is valid for any positive integer k.